What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. So I forgot to record an intro for part two of the UCAT abstract reasoning video. So here's Karma Medic from the future. If you guys haven't seen part one already, check out the links in the description and I'll leave a card somewhere up here. Watch that video first before you watch part two. And if you haven't seen my abstract reasoning video from last year, I'm sure you'll find that useful as well. If you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, you can do so at Karma Medic. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more UCAT content coming soon. And without further ado, let's jump straight into answering questions live on camera. All right, we're doing great so far. We're doing great. Yes, I like these questions. So this is to this as this is to that. What do we have here? Star, half star, star. Two and a half stars becomes one, two, three, four, five shapes. Maybe two and a half stars becomes five total shapes. So maybe here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this needs to have four stars in it. One, two, three, no, one, two, three, four. All right, so we have a bunch of half stars that make up. So my rule, what I think is, this is two and a half stars. Two and a half times two is five total shapes. One, two, three, four, five. So here we have eight shapes. So I would expect to see four stars here. So what I see here is one, two, and then two halves here and two halves here that make up a total of four. I think that's correct. I don't have a better um, rule and I've probably already spent too much time. So if I think I have a rule, I'm going to go for it. Let's see if I got it right. Correct. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Set A and set B. So this is a very oddly shaped set of patterns. Okay. So let's look at the gray squares. One, four, three, three, four, four. Okay. And here we have two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so there's always eight gray things here. Okay, and we can see that this like mushroom has the head at the top and the stalk at the bottom for all of the ones here. Whereas here, the mushroom is like upside down with the head at the bottom and the thing at the top. We have these encasing lines, which are either one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So look, I probably don't have the full set of rules here, but I believe I have enough of the rule in order to come up and answer these questions. So this one here, the mushroom is uh, from the top with the stock down and it has two, four, six, eight in it. So I'm gonna go with B. This one is sideways, which doesn't appear in either A or B. So I'm gonna go with neither. This one is upside down, similar to A, but it has two, four, six, eight in it, which I know A doesn't have, so I'm gonna go with neither. This one here is the right way up, like B, and has two, four, six, eight, so I'm gonna go with B. And this one is again similar to B, but two, four, two, four, six, eight, nine, so I'm gonna go with neither. All right, so perfect. I managed to score five out of five on this, um, even though I didn't have the perfect rule, so look, the actual rule was set A less than five squared dots in the shape, set B eight squared dots in the upside down shape. So I had the set B rule down quite well, but set A, I didn't have it perfect, but I kind of knew what was going on enough to answer these questions. So like I said before, I looked at these shapes, I knew that I probably didn't have the perfect rule, but this is such a time-based test, such a time-heavy test, that if you think you have a decent rule, if you think you have at least half of the rule, just go for it. You'll probably end up scoring four out of five or five out of five. Which figure completes the series? This should be easy. So there's always five in this dice-like thing. Let's go one shape at a time and see what's going on. Top left, this arrow here is pointing top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. So now we know that this shape here has to point top left. So, nope, yes, 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 yes. A is eliminated. Let's look at this one, right, down, left, this is missing one here, right, down, left, right, no, it's fine. So this one needs to point to the top right. Top right, top right, top right, nope, nope. So I know it has to be one of these two. Let's look at the middle one, down, up, down, up. So now it needs to be down. These are both down, so I can't eliminate. Let's move on to this, right, nah, nah, nah. So now it needs to be pointing bottom left, which is this one, so I know it's C. So notice not all the arrows move at 90 degree increments, some of them move at 45. But again, just notice what's going on one shape at a time and you should be able to figure out the pattern quite easily. All right, so another set A, set B question. One diamond, one square, two diamonds, a rectangle, and here two diamonds, one rectangle, okay? So maybe we know that a diamond is always present with a rectangle, except it's not here. So we know that's not the case. On the right hand side maybe, whereas this is on the left hand side. Mm-hmm. 
not really sure what's going on from A, so let me move on to B. 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, here we have four and triangle, three and triangle, four, no triangle. I'm gonna try and look at it from a bird's eye view, not really like count anything, but just see the overall picture. See if anything comes to light. Generally, I'm getting the vibe that the diamonds are more on the right hand side here, whereas they're more on the left hand side here. Now clearly, this is not the perfect rule because there's this anomaly here. Let's see, two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, two, two, four, six. Please be odd here. Two, four, five, two, four, five, two, four, five. Ah, okay. So this is again, a great example of like getting overwhelmed with information and them trying to confuse me. I was looking at the diamonds. I was looking at the triangles. I was looking at the shapes. Whereas it was so much simpler, it's just about odd versus even total number of shapes. So which of the following belongs in set A? I know it needs to be even. So two, four, six, boom. So these must all be odd. Let's double check to make sure. Two, four, six. Ah. So what's the difference between these two then that would make one of them fit into shape A, into set A? Two, two, two. Here there's always less diamonds than other shapes, whereas here there's always more diamonds than other shapes. So I'm gonna think that that might also play a role. So I'm gonna go with this one for set A. For set B, I want it to be odd. So three here, two, four, six, and three here. So three, three, but I want more diamonds than shapes. So here, more diamonds than shapes would be this one. Wait, did I do that right here? No, so for set A, I want less diamonds than other shapes. So it'd be this one here. Uh, set A. So again, I want less diamonds than shapes. Um, so like this one, and I want it to be even two, four, six, seven. So no two, four, six, seven. So no three, two, four, six, and less diamonds than shapes. So that one there. Now I want more diamonds than shapes and I want it to be odd. So four, no, two, four, six, no, two, four, no. So it must be this one. I don't even have to check the other ones. And then finally, um, I want less diamonds than shapes, and I want it to be even. So nope, nope, uh, nope, two, four, six, less diamonds than shapes, yes. All right, please be right. Wow, that was a difficult one. That was a proper difficult one. Let's see if I got it right. Five out of five correct, let's go. Now let's see if I had the actual pattern down correctly. Set A, even number of shapes, and there are more or equal non-diamond shapes than diamonds. So look, I got the rule right. It took me a bit of time, but I figured it out. Very tricky, Medify, very tricky. All right, let's keep going, we're doing well. Which figure completes the series? Nice, I love these ones because they're so simple. So black here skips two spaces and goes there, skips two spaces and goes there, skips two spaces and goes here. Uh, over here. So now I would expect it to be here. So black needs to be in the last second to last one. Great. So they knew that I would go to that first. So even though I followed this black square, it's resulted in nothing useful for me because all of these shapes have the black square in the right place. So now these stars, um, right, left, left, blank, left, left, right, double. Hmm. Interesting. Um, where are these stars? Okay. I'm not going to focus on the stars because I'm not sure what's going on. Um, the striped one moves again two spaces. So again two spaces. So they all seem to move two spaces. The white one moves two again. The cross one moves two. So they all move two spaces. So what I want is gray here followed by black followed by striped. So gray in the middle followed by black followed by striped which is the same as this one. And they have the white and the cross the same, which means now I have to figure out what's going on with the stars in order to distinguish these two shapes. So bottom left star stays bottom left, goes right and Oh wait, maybe two, 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 so now I would expect the bottom right one to go up. Does that make sense? And the bottom left one to stay where it is. So it's rotating like this, like that, so that's staying. Then this is pivoting like that and that's staying. Then this is pivoting like that and that's staying. So yeah, I'd expect bottom left and top right. Okay, so I think it's this one. Wow, that's a really bad description of what's going on with the stars. Um, but let's see if I have it right. It was kind of like one moves and pivots, then the other one moves and pivots, then the other one moves and pivots. 
it's, yeah, that was kind of confusing. Let's see if I got it right. Okay, I did. So let's see if they can explain it better than me. The stars are a bit more complicated. In each box, only one star moves at a time. So that's what I was talking about. For example, one, two, the bottom left star is still and the top right star moves. Okay, cool. Here's the description if you want it. Next what? question. Which figure completes the series? Black and white, black and white, black and white, black and white. Okay. White triangle, black triangle, white triangle, black triangle. Black square, white square, black square, white square. Okay, so colors are inverting every time. Um, and then also the position of the triangle and the square is flipping from top to bottom as well. So what I want to see in the final picture is a black square on the bottom and a white triangle on top. Great, okay, let's try that again. So, that, that, oh, okay, I can also see the, the square is moving down and then it moves right and then it moves up. So now I wanna see a black square in the top left. So that's this one. I don't even need to check anything else. I can move on. You can see the black square moves down here and then right and then up. So now I need it to be left. If you know the pattern based on one object moving and you know that's it, just click it, just move on. Next question, let's go. I know I've said that a million times, but I really wanna like, I wanna drill that into everyone who's taking the UCAT. It's such a time constrained test. The second you think you have a pattern, the second you think you know what's going on, trust your gut and go with it. Set A, three, two, two, four, three, something, something, four, three, four, one. So in set A, in the top half, there's more dots than the bottom half. So I'm assuming in set B, it's gonna be the opposite which it definitely seems to be the case. So that's what I'm gonna go, with, gonna go with for now. So this has more on the top than on the bottom. That's gonna be A. This has more on the top than the bottom. It's gonna be A. This has more on the bottom than the top. It's gonna be B. This has more on the bottom than the top. It's gonna be B. And this is the same, it's gonna be B. Now, having done this really quickly, I think that this rule is a bit too simple for it to be like that. Let's see, three out of five. Let's see what's going on. Oh my goodness. The total number of dots in a square add up to prime numbers, and there are more dots in the top half of the square. The total number of dots add up to square numbers. Now look, let me say that that is a really difficult pattern, and I think it would be quite difficult for someone to figure that out in the short period of time that you have to figure these out. As long as we found that there was a difference in the number of dots on the top and bottom half, we've managed to score the majority of the points, and I think that that's fine. All right, I'm gonna do one more because I wanna end on a question where I get 100%. So let's see what's going on here. We have two circles and a triangle in each one. The triangle is rotating 45 degrees each time. No, 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 okay. And the circles are doing what? Moving down, moving up, moving down, moving up, and then moving left and moving right. Correct, yeah. So now I'm gonna expect this arrow to be pointing right down, left, up. So that is the first three, A, B, or C. And then these dots, so let's follow this black one here. It has moved down one, down two, one right. And so now I'm gonna expect it to move to the bottom right. So I so it's either A or B. And then the, the other circle over here has moved up one, then up one, then left one, so left again, which are both of these. Now I need to figure out what's going on with the colors. So black, gray, black, gray. So it seems like if they're in the corners, they're black. If they're not in the corners, they're gray. So now I'm gonna expect them to be black, which they both are, great. And then the triangle, white, black, white, black. I'm gonna expect it to be white now. So it must be this one. All right, guys, so that is where I'm gonna call it for today. I've been doing abstract reasoning questions for quite a long time now. I hope you guys have managed to see my thought process in this video, how it is that I'm actually thinking about the questions as I go through them, what it is that I'm looking for, what it is that I'm using to exclude certain answers, and just my technique and general thinking as I do the questions live on camera. If you guys have enjoyed this video, do leave a like on it, do subscribe to the channel to see more UK cat and medical school content from me. Share this video with anyone who's preparing for the UCAT, I'm sure that they'll find it very helpful. If you have any feedback at all, leave it in a comment down below. Good luck practicing for the UCAT and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!